Hey friend, let's just catch up. I feel like I haven't actually chatted with you in like two months, so we're just gonna review books, buy books, dance, work, drink coffee, and just chat about stuff in this vlog, so come along. I'm gonna show you what's in the book boxes behind me in a second, but first I need to pick some music. I am teaching a lyrical masterclass tomorrow here at a university in London, and I have nothing prepared for it. So I want like a really nice routine. I'm thinking obviously we go Tortured Poets Department, but maybe LOML, Loss of My Life. It's like a nice lyrical, sad, you know, depressed vibe, which, you know, we love to dance to. <laughs> Ugh, lyrical is hard because my body wants to instantly go to either contemporary or ballet and lyrical is kind of like this mutt genre that's just kind of come about and it's it that's gonna be the tricky part is like finessing this lyrical routine today I want like at least a minute and a half of choreo it's okay. If anyone can bring about my creativity, it's Miss Taylor Swift. Oh, it's such a good song! Okay, I've not accomplished very much on that dance, but I need a break. So we're embracing Taylor as always. And we're going to talk about a new book box. I got both of these on Saturday. They are both for April. This is a new box for me I'm trying out. It's called the Butterfly Book Club. This is one of their two or three different boxes. This is a fantasy romance and they exclusively work with indie authors. I have to say that just up front, like the packaging itself is absolutely gorgeous. It's confusing to me that they change the font of their company name for each book box. So like their logo isn't consistent. So from a marketing standpoint, uh, which is part of my profession, uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. So my recommendation for them is to hone in on one font and then be consistent with that across our boxes. But anyway, no one cares. Um, I have found my replacement. This is the Fairy Loot Y book box. I am making a switch. I think I'm gonna cancel this and just spend that money here. It's slightly on the expensive side if you like compare the two boxes because you get more merch and things with this one, but like I'm not interested in the merch and I'm very rarely interested in the Fairy Loot book, including this month's. So I'm gonna start moving that money towards these books, which is what I read anyway. Like my Amazon wish list is just filled with indie authors, fantasy romance books. And this is just like absolutely ideal for me. So let's open it up. I've already opened it up because like I said, I opened this on Saturday afternoon when I got home from work. And my goal was to unbox it then and then do a reading vlog for you. But unfortunately the book was so good that I read it in two days. I read it from 3 p.m. on Saturday to 9 p.m. on Sunday with work between, and that's A Cursed Kiss by Jenny Hickman. This has been on my TBR for ages. I started the audiobook last August and uh, didn't remember that I started it until I started reading chapter one. And I was like, wait a second, this sounds familiar. It's honestly so good. Look how gorgeous this is. I have commented on their Instagram post asking if they're going to make matching editions in the future like i don't know if they do that it's a small uk book box so i don't know if like fairy loot they will make matching editions and then email you so you could purchase them but i you know like you can see this kind of castle sprayed edge like maybe it could continue on with the series however it is a standalone fantasy romance and i like i said i finished this last night this is what every standalone fantasy romance should strive to be it was exceptional like everything you could possibly want was in here in less than 400 pages there could have been like more world building and stuff but honestly for being a standalone it was just it was just prime so i'll tell you about it in a second but it came with a bookmark which i really liked i love the color purple i'm obsessed so that's so pretty and then i loved this little uh just 
I don't know, what is this box? It has <laughs> some art of the main love interest and then a quote on the back. I thought it was really pretty. And then it came with a hand signed book plate. So I'm going to stick that in in a minute. What I think is kind of unique about them is, oh, I didn't realize it came with a letter from the author. Okay, just a small letter with an art print. Um, I think what's unique and cool about them is that it truly is like a book club. So it comes with a hand signed and stamped date of when the read along starts. Obviously, I've already read it. But this, let me just kind of unwrap this here. Eight different prompts with quotes and things and page numbers so you can write down your thoughts. So maybe I'll do that and then like I'll participate in the club eventually and then the read along itself. So I'm just overall super impressed with this box. I think it came in at like 22 pounds for the box, which is primarily a book and then like you're a part of a club and then one bookish item, obviously. But the books are gorgeous. So if you're in the UK, you get free UK shipping as well, which you do not get with Fairy Loop. So this is first in a series of standalone interconnected books that all take place within Erin, which is this right here. It's totally inspired by Ireland. The author lives in Ireland in Tipperary, actually, which is not far from where I studied abroad in college. Um, there are a lot of references to like Irish mythology, Irish mythological creatures. The author doesn't give like a ton of descriptions about these characters, but a lot of the creatures I recognize from other fae fantasy books. So I think they're kind of standard. Like a puka, for instance. This follows a girl who is a lady. She has grown up in a privileged life and she's in love with the man her older sister is betrothed to. When her older sister actually kisses the Gonkana, a cursed prince of seduction, his, his kiss kills her and she is on a mission now to resurrect her sister and kill the Gonkana. <laughs> It's so good. I read it in a day. I seriously enjoyed it. It's what I would describe as the perfect airplane book. If you have eight hours and you just need something that's kind of fast paced and fun with good romance and very, very, very good witty banter between two people that do not instantly like each other nor fall in love. So that is the book for you if that's what you want. I've already opened this and I'm currently using one of the items which is a Belladonna trivet tray. I think it's so nice. I thought about selling this on my Depop which I recently restarted. I'm selling books that I no longer um, need on my shelf. If you want to peruse it, I'll link it down below. I recently sold my UK copy of Belladonna because I'm collecting the US editions. I much prefer them but I really like that. So we have the trinket tray. I'll use these One Dark Window reusable face wash claws. I mean, I haven't finished One Dark Window, but I mean, I will always use reusable makeup like pad removers. Rainier, don't eat them. No, thank you. No, thank you. Hi. Hi. Let's go. I won't use this. <laughs> it's a pin board from the prison healer which i have not read rainier has just stolen something from the box i'll get that in a minute these however i'm debating selling they are fourth wing page overlays and if you are new to my channel hi hello my name is reagan i do not like fourth wing and i haven't made it past page like 70 of iron flame but these are pretty should we put one of them in the book and see how it looks maybe my heart will change at some point and I will see what's in this series that most people see in the series. Right now, I just think there's nothing quite captivating about it. Anyway, <laughs> anyway. Okay, but like, it's so fun. That's so pretty. I need these for all of my Sarah J Mass books. I don't know if I need to keep these for fourth wing though, because I'm not a fourth wing girly. Lastly, we have a velvet purple makeup bag and tarot cards that match this month's book. It's one I haven't heard of. It's one I probably bring here. You don't need to steal it. You don't need to steal it. It's 
it's one that I it's one that I would not have bought myself so that's what I'm saying like I don't need to keep paying for a box that I'm rarely interested in however I'm nervous to fully cancel because like the crimson moth that I read recently I did not expect to absolutely love that book and that came in a fairly wide book box also probably wouldn't have bought that book either so you just never know okay it came with a bookmark that just fell on the floor it's called darker by four never heard of it by june cl tan i like the kind of japanese style manga i don't know art can't get my words out it looks like oh she's the author of jade fire gold i've wanted to read that book but i have not what is this book about though Ruby is an exorcist in training with one goal in mind, honing her magic to avenge her mother's death. Yuran is a black sheep of an illustrious family. The world would be at his feet had he been born with magic. An accident causes Ruby's magic to transfer to Yuran. I'm probably saying the name's wrong. Everything turns upside down. It's a YA urban fantasy with a slow burn romance. I'll put it on my list of books to read. I have a shelf down here dedicated to fairly wide books <laughs> that I want to get to. Okay, can you not eat these, please? Thank you. Let's go. Let's go. Rhaenyra, let's go. Need to listen. Thank you. Hi, Rhaenyra. Say hello to the camera. Oh, you dropped your bow. Okay, come back up. Come back up. Here you go. On the docket for this evening is to do these dishes, start prepping for nachos tonight. Then I think I'm gonna pick out like two or three books that I really want to read this week. I've started so many, my mood is just all over the place. I need to just make a little TBR. This angle though, I've had a change of plans. Instead of making a TBR for this week because this week will be busy and just taking into consideration that I don't stick to TBRs in general, I'm going to divide these books by video projects that I wanna do over the next two to three months. So that way when yeah, so that way I don't have to stress like, oh, I'm not vlogging, oh, I'm not reading or whatever. I know I can just come to the shelf and just be like, okay, this is what this is. So I'm going to write on a little post-it note or like maybe bind them by ribbons. That might be cute. Like these two, I'm going to try reading cowboy romances in late May slash June before I go to Nashville. So like that's a project. So if ever I'm like, I don't have a book for the train, I can just grab one of these and start filming that. I think that's how my brain needs to work. <sighs> does that make sense? Does everyone, does anyone else like understand the, the chaotic reading nature of my mind? Like I start books months ago and now I'm just finishing them. So these are two that I <laughs> have started for other vlogs and like I haven't finished. So those are gonna go in there. Book of Ezreal, I started reading in January before I even picked up Rhaenyra. She's currently trying to eat my slipper off my foot. Rhaenyra, hi, come here. No, thank you. So yeah, that's the gist. That's what I'm gonna do. Just, this is my TBR project YouTube shelf. I'm feeling fancy today. <gasps> the notches are done. Yeah, I'm feeling fancy today. I never ever use our china and my husband got me this beautiful set from Royal Albert. This is Old Country Roses. You've probably seen it around, it's pretty famous. The Royal Albert collection is just beautiful. Like everything they come out with is beautiful. And he bought me almost a full set. Like they keep bringing out new pieces and there are some pieces that have been, you know, retired or whatever. I haven't used it in maybe, well, maybe since like 2020. I always thought I'd have like a big tea party and like invite a bunch of people, but all my friends are on Bookstagram and Booktube. So we need to get together and have a tea party at my house with my royal china. It was hot. Oh my God, that's actually a lot of food.
Good morning, friends. It's Tuesday. I need to put a tan on. Do you see this pasty skin? I have no color, no color whatsoever, no healthy glow to my body. So we're gonna put a tan on. And then on today's agenda is to one, get a matcha because I'm very much craving one. The sun is actually out for once. Take Rainier on a walk. And then we're going to <coughs> Rainiera. Can you please not bark in every single video that I take? Honestly, she doesn't care. Say hi. <laughs> then I'm gonna need to pick up new ballet shoes because mine are actually shredded and so embarrassing. And then I'm going to be near Forbidden Planet actually. So, <laughs> you know, girl's gonna pop in there, find some book. Does anyone else do this? Like their face is so puffy. Mine is so puffy this morning. I keep this ice roller in my freezer and I just roll it across my face, especially underneath my eyes and like my cheek areas. Oh, it wakes me up. Oh. All right, my tan is on. I'm gonna reapply this Active Shine. I got this last week and it's kind of expensive, but I really like it. My nails naturally are so horrible. <laughs> Don't mind Rhaenyra <laughs> chewing her food in the background. But this has like vitamin E and just like a lot of plant. Rhaenyra, it's like plant-based and it's sparkly and it just provides strength and like beautiful hair, but also like a shine and it's just glittery and I really love it. So I'm just gonna reapply it. It's so easy to just like maintain this. You don't have to do anything. You just put one or two coats on. Rhaenyra, they can't hear me when you're being dramatic. Oh my gosh. You need to relax. Mommy's painting her nails. Okay. Okay, this is better. This, now you can see the sparkles. I don't know, I really like it. Ugh. I'm feeling really anxious and stressed right now for reasons regarding work. And I don't know, I'm just, yeah, I'm like my heart's fluttering, you know? Rainier is chewing on her bone right now. I'm trying to do work on my laptop but feeling like really unmotivated. I am drinking sea moss, which Christian bought for us. And it actually like looks disgusting in the jar, but when you put it in the water, you can't taste it. And it's supposed to help reduce inflammation, has a lot of antioxidants, um, like helps blood flow and stuff. So I don't know, I've been trying to drink it every day, trying to be good about that. But I don't know, I'm just feeling like really glum today on Tuesday. <sighs> yeah, that's all I have to say for this update. How can I be sad when I have this baby sleeping in my arms? Oh my God, my hair. <laughs> it's almost time to wash my tan off. It's been like an hour since I talked to you and I still haven't accomplished anything. Second coffee of the day. I'm going for the mermaid look. This is my favorite outfit for teaching ballet when I don't have to wear like a uniform of sorts. This is from Eleve Dancewear, which is my favorite dancewear brand in the entire world. They have the prettiest stuff. I'm just going to put some makeup on. I've washed off my tan. Need to pack my bag. Maybe get ballet shoes, it's like already three o'clock. I should have left sooner, but I don't wanna leave Rhaenyra by herself longer than like absolutely necessary because she's my baby princess and loves you. She's looking at me. Hi baby, you're so perfect and I love you. You're my best friend. You're so beautiful. the whole class to this album it's so good it's so good Rainiera where are you Rainiera Soros oh hello oh Rainiera what are you doing so I'd be extra glam and put my sparkly Fenty on I 
love this stuff. It's so extra and it just creates the most like, I don't know, mermaid, sparkly, iridescent vibes. And it totally, oh my gosh, it totally sparkles in the sunlight. Bring your rest up pulling on my dress. I don't know if you can see it because I don't have like the best camera. I just use my phone, but it's the best Fenty product ever. Okay, that's enough now. Come on. God, she's so smart. She knows when I'm leaving. Come here, Rhaenyra. Come on. Don't hide. <laughs> you break mommy's heart. Come on. Come on, Rhaenyra. Come on. I put Bluey on. Oh, no, I didn't put Bluey on today. I put Monsters Ink. I put Monsters Ink on her for... I can't get my words out. I put Monsters Ink on for her today. She's gone through many of the Pixar movies so far. <sighs> Going through Monsters Ink. Okay, Rainier. Come on, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Rainier. Come on, Rainier. Come on, Rainier. <laughs> I just came back for a very healthy lunch of Nutella and peanut butter on toast. I need to pop to the post office because I've sold a few books that I've unhauled in the past few months and I need to choose. I always like to include bookish stickers with things that I sell on from my shelf. I need to pick something out that like fits the vibe of the book. Let's see what I have. Let's see all my stickers. That one for Belladonna. I don't know, that one's kind of fun. Actually, I think this one fits like the colors. So they're gonna get that. I go on and on about it. I am one of the tanners where I feel like maybe it's not showcasing the flash right energy that is in my heart. I just can't, it, it like exceeded everything that I thought. It was just, it was magnificent. I enjoyed every second of reading this book and when I wasn't reading it, I was thinking about it. I will think about these characters for a long time. Whenever I rate a book five stars or really like hyper fixate and obsess over a book, I make a Pinterest for to go with it to kind of get what's going on. I just made one for wild love. I'm about to sit down and make one for this book because it is after. Hi, Rhaenyra. It's 630 and I have so much work I need to finish, but my brain is just in a dump right now, like a creative rut, and I need to be creative constantly every single task is a creative task and i'm just like reeling at the seams here do i make another coffee 
That's probably not what I need to do, but I... Mm, I just want to read my book. I just want to read A Promise of Paradise, even though, like, I don't know what's going on because I still don't remember anything. I, I, I just want to read something that's not making things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how I feel. Do you hear this music? It's because they brought a bunch of food trucks and miniature golf and stuff literally right outside and below my flat, which is fun for everyone else, but it's not so much fun for me. It's Friday, hi. I don't think I actually like spoke to you yesterday. I was really busy. I was in central London working all day. Managed to pop into Waterstones Piccadilly, you know, the nine floor one for like 20 minutes. But I just um, hate going there sometimes because all the books are full price and there's nothing new. I did see one book I wanna look up. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I need to review a book for you. We're going to talk about Ruthless Vows, which I've never mentioned on my channel before, but we're going to talk about it here and now, but I got a little something. This very cute pink box. I got this for Christian because he's just been working really, really hard on his dreams and his ambitions. And he just works really hard on like taking care of us and providing for me and Rhaenyra. So donut time here in London, they do these beautiful donuts, but they've only ever had one option for a vegan and gluten-free donut. And it was always chocolate, but they have six now and he doesn't know it. So I got him all six of them and look how absolutely beautiful they are. I'm probably not gonna even need to add some kind of background music because we've got it for us. Sorry if it's annoying to you. I can't do anything about it for the next like six hours. Okay, Divine Rivals. This was a five-star read for me at the end or middle of last year, 2023. I said it was a perfect book, which is a wild statement. I love this book. I recommended it to everyone on every live stream that I did with the last like two months of the year. And then in January, I was like, oh, I, I want to wait for the fairy loot edition to get a matching copy of Ruthless Vows in this design. But I didn't want to spend the money at the time. So I ended up getting it on Apple Books for like three or four pounds. Started reading it in January. It's now the beginning of May. Ruthless Vows deserves a Ruthless review. Sorry, I just had to say it because it just kind of fit together. <laughs> Don't come for me. Oh. Okay, so Ruthless Vows. Here's my issue with it. There is a lot of plot surrounding this war between these two gods. Apparently, they're the two gods left out of like seven gods or something. I don't know. The lore and the mythology and the magic system was basically non-existent in book one. It was just kind of there which usually would bother me, but I was there for the romance and this kind of World War II setting. I didn't really mind the, the magical element of it. I thought it was quite interesting and it was something that I've never read before. This book, however, didn't really focus on the romance. Like the characters are not together and I DNF'd it at 30%. I ended up looking up other people's reviews and apparently that was the right choice for me because they stay apart most of the whole book which i understand why it's part of the main premise of the plot but i just felt like all of this all of this war all, all the all the elements of the war and like this these gods and goddesses they felt silly to me i don't understand why they're so invested in these two 18 year olds i don't know why they're that special to these divine beings we're not given a map so it's a fantastical world that has a lot of traveling and you have to kind of remember like oh the war is happening here and there are two towns over but then they're gonna move and i'm like why didn't you just make us a map why didn't you just have an artist draw one i don't understand that logic it was overall boring and uninteresting. We also have a lot of side characters with little bits of info dumps. I didn't care about any of them. I just wanted, um, I just wanted our, our two main people. I wanted to just feel that love and like desire and just like young love and heartbreak. I wanted to feel that the way I felt it in book one and it was not executed well in this book. I DNF'd it at 30%.
I did give it one star on Goodreads. I was in like the one or two percent of people that gave it a negative, negative review. And I'm surprised, but like, don't try to make fetch happen, Reagan, when it's not happening. It's literally been five months. So it's time to let it go. I'm glad I didn't buy a copy of the book. I'm debating whether or not I actually sell Divine Rivals because I'm kind of in a mood where I just like sell things that don't bring me like a ton of joy at the moment. But I loved Divine Rivals. I did say it was a perfect book, but now with book two being not so perfect to me, it's subjective. If, if you loved Ruthless Vows, tell me why. I'm happy for you. I wish that I felt the same way. I do think that there is a camp that feels similar to me. I may try to look up the ending. I did try before, but I didn't get like a conclusive answer to what happened to the, at the end of Ruthless Vows. But I just don't think I'm missing out on anything. Divine Rivals will forever just like stand alone in my brain as a standalone. <laughs> Anyway, it's like 5.30 p.m. on Friday. I need to edit a YouTube video, but Christian actually has my like hard drive converter thingy-majig. So maybe we read a little bit of A Promise of Parado. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hey, hello. It is the following Wednesday. I think the last day I filmed was Friday. Did I even film on Friday? The thing is with Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I was so busy and actually had a lot that I could have filmed and then just didn't. So shame on me for that. But yeah, this was just a part of my life in one week, one random week at the end of April, beginning of May. Um, it was kind of fun just to be back on camera, just filming and chatting to you guys because I haven't done that in so long. I've been vlogging though, that's the thing. I have been vlogging since January. I have a whole House of Flame and Shadow reading vlog. Spoiler reading vlog. I have um, a vlog reading The Crimson Moth. I have a vlog that I'm currently filming reading for other books, Promise of Perizo being one of them. Uh, this week though, I was filming for that vlog and reading this book. And I can tell you I'm on, I'm on page 348. I don't like it as much as book one. Um, but I just talked for four and a half minutes in my other vlog <laughs> about all my thoughts on this book because I won't repeat myself here. But I'm just going to drink my coffee and just say thank you for hanging out with me. I feel like this was pretty boring, but this is just my life. You, what are you trying to do? You're trying to eat the fairy scoop. I've been using this as a bookmark. I think she's very interested in it. Do you want it? Just have it. I don't care. You know what? I don't know if this vlog... So this vlog, because the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, this book I started reading right for this other vlog that I started filming at the beginning of April and it's now almost mid-May. So I think this vlog is going to come out before that one. So that's kind of backwards in my time. I guess it doesn't matter, right? Because I know booktubers put out videos like chronologically, like April, May, June, July. But I'm going to be putting out like a House of Flame Shadow reading vlog that I filmed at the end of January, beginning of February you know, like maybe next month. Um, so yeah, that's okay. My hair color will be different. Rainier will be, will be a baby. She'll be little. I'm just rambling right now. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. I'm just filming vlogs for fun. It's not that deep. I do like this new dress though. I got this at Hollister uh, over the weekend when I should have been filming for this vlog but I just was spending time with Christian we had a little date and he bought me a few dresses from Hollister and a really cute blue and white top I'm sure you'll see in a video coming up anyway uh my next big video though is something really exciting <laughs> so what should I say should I say it here Okay, I'll say it here. For those of you who are my BFFs and you've made it to the end of this vlog. Okay, actually, Rhaenyra, I take it back. You cannot eat this. You cannot eat this. You're going to swallow it. Just kidding. That was a really bad idea on my part. What was I thinking? No, you may not have that. I'm so sorry. Open your mouth. That was a bad mommy move. That was. Okay, anyway, for those of you who are my BFFs and you made it to the end of this random vlog, um, this weekend I'm going to Paris and I'm seeing Taylor Swift. 
Christian surprised me. Christian surprised me. We're going to see Taylor Swift this weekend, this Saturday. I am stoked. It's an early birthday and Christmas present, obviously. Um, it's for both <laughs> because it's such a big gift. I'm so excited. So, so, so excited. And I think we're going to go, we can't go to like Disneyland because there's just not enough time, but I think we're going to go to like the Disneyland village, which is like their like boardwalk, I think. Um, is that the, or like Disney Springs, you know, anyway, you made it to the end of this video, drop a pink heart emoji for lover. And I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye. Oh, you're so beautiful. You're so beautiful, Rhaenyra. Do you want to say goodbye to the camera? Say bye-bye, everyone.